Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Honestly, I don't even know what episode on or really where we left off, but today we're in one of the upstairs bedrooms and my focus for right now at least is to fill in a lot of the holes, like the minor holes, the nail holes, screw, screw holes, anything like that with some dried up spackling. I actually use this stuff on my furniture flips already, so you guys are probably pretty familiar with this product at least. Now as far as this room goes, I'm gonna start in here. I've already washed the walls and I did get this spackling on and it's dry now. So I can go ahead and start sanding it down. I just have a 220 grit here. And basically I think my plan for now is to just get all of the excess spackling off the walls and then start cutting in here. I also need to prime basically everything, the walls, the ceilings, because it, the ceilings need, definitely need to be primed again. And then we're gonna use a different primer on the floor because we still have some of that mold situation going, but I don't know if we'll get to the floors in this video, just because I want that to be one of the last things that we do. So I'm hoping that gets you guys pretty caught up here. There are quite a bit of holes that need to be filled, so I'm just gonna go to town and start getting all that excess off because I'm actually pretty excited about priming and cutting in this room. I think it's going to make just a world of difference. I didn't really get around to filming me putting on any of the spackling, but don't worry because there's plenty more rooms in the basement that it needs to be done to, so you'll be able to see it then. Instead, I was kind of one step ahead and I was able to sand back all of the excess spackling. I did end up going back with a wet rag as well to make sure that all the dust was off so that we could actually get into priming the walls. A lot of the series I've talked about how there is kind of a musty plus cigarette smoke smell that is absorbed into the walls and just really stinking up the place. So for that reason, we're going to be using this Kills primer. It's an odor and stain primer. So its main purpose is to get rid of those stronger stains and smells. And I can confidently say that it did do its job and it made a huge difference because we are no longer smelling any of that cigarette smoke smell it is smelling a lot better so far a lot of this series has been taking things down removing things and just a lot of tear down but putting this bright white primer on the walls really makes me feel good and it makes me feel like we're actually moving along it also simply felt really good to get rid of these gross yellow walls that were here originally when we bought the house I prefer more of a super bright white, so honestly this Kills Primer was much more my speed and my style. I was thinking that honestly these walls would look good if it just had full coverage of this bright white Kills Primer. Now obviously I know that's not everyone's cup of tea so we're not going to be painting the walls a bright white like this, but if it were to be my house that's exactly the color that I'd be wanting. Avery's younger siblings were really excited about the painting part of this house renovation and wanted to be involved when it came time to do so, so I figured they could have a try at priming the walls. However, none of them have ever painted walls before, so I gave them a little bit of a lesson and it was definitely interesting to say the least. This moment really took me back to when I was a little girl and anytime my mom was painting the walls I'd always want to try and I'd be so upset every time that she had said no. But being on the other side of this now that I'm grown up I do realize why the answer was always no. However, even though it was a pretty rough start with some patience and correcting the boys actually did a pretty fair job at their first time painting i was right there next to them so anytime i noticed something i would kind of walk behind them and fix it but at the end of the day it was a lot of fun watching them have fun and teaching them something new also despite having to go back and fix a few of their mistakes it was a lot faster painting this room with three people versus if i were doing it on my own after i finished cutting in i let the boys finish painting the first room and i went into the master bedroom to sand back any of that excess spackling then i started cutting in there now i'm one of those weirdos that actually enjoys the process of cutting in and painting walls and ceilings 
and just about anything. I know there's a lot of people out there that absolutely despise this work though and would probably hire it out if they ever needed it done, but for some reason, I think it's just super calming and relaxing. Let me know in the comments down below if you like painting walls like me or if you're one of those people who absolutely despise it and would probably hire it out before ever doing it yourself. After getting the master bedroom primed, I took a break from priming and started vacuuming the floors in the kitchen so that there wasn't any dust that could get kicked up when priming these walls. You can really see how yellow these kitchen and living room walls were compared to the bedrooms before priming. So spoiler alert, but the kitchen and the living room had the biggest changes once the primer went on. You will be surprised to see, you can see all of that yellow, especially where the stove and the fridge was. That's not even grease, trust me, I scrubbed those walls with Dawn dish soap, with vinegar, with just about everything. Those are f like stains and it was really gross, but once the primer goes on there, it looks so much better. I also took some time vacuuming out the vents that were right there. I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any drywall or any junk that was left behind there. But after I got the living room and kitchen vacuumed up, I was able to start cutting in. If you look very closely, you can see that there is some spackling on the walls yet. I eventually did go back and sand those down before I took the roller to the wall. Everything, all this footage is just a little bit everywhere just because of what's getting done when and who's doing it and where the camera is being placed at that moment in time but there is spackling on the walls and eventually gets done before I start actually priming and rolling on the primer on the walls like I am here. If you're familiar with my YouTube channel, then you probably know that I also upload weekly furniture flips, and in almost all of those videos, I am painting the furniture that I'm working on, so I'm very familiar with the painting process and I know how to make sure that it's done right. Painting walls versus painting furniture is a little bit different though, but on the same token, they kind of go hand in hand because at the end of the day, the process is mostly the same. The biggest difference that I really realized though was how tired my arms were. I'm using that roller up and down, up and down versus just kind of side to side like I do on my furniture flips and my arms were absolutely killing me. They were so tired at the end of this. For that reason, me and Avery came to an agreement that I would paint all of the walls and he would paint all of the ceilings because he was a lot better at painting the ceilings than I was. For some reason, he has more experience painting ceilings than I do. I mean, I guess it makes sense because I paint furniture. I don't typically paint walls even though I enjoy it and Avery's just had more experience painting um, walls and ceilings. I've painted the walls just fine but the ceilings were not going well so he agreed to do that but not only is he better at it but he's also much faster. The only thing is unlike me Avery is one of those people that despises painting. He thinks it's super mind-numbing and boring so I tried to only have him do the ceilings, but because he was doing so much better of a job than I was, I really wanted him to do that and he stuck through it for me. He knew that I wasn't doing a great job and it was taking me a long, long time and he had it figured out. We got just about everything done that you've seen in this video during the weekend. Most of our work is spent during the weekends because Avery has a full-time job, Nate is still in school, and I still have furniture flipping stuff to handle. So we spend most of our weekends here, and I will say that this was one of those weekends where we felt so proud of how much we got done. For one, and for two, at the end of the day, we were able to just take a step back and just kind of be like, whoa, because switching those yellow walls with this white primer made it look 10 times better. We still have the entryway to do and we still have the basement to do, but the whole upstairs, other than the bathroom I guess, has now been painted and it just looks so incredibly good. 
before I let you guys go, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overlook on how these walls are actually looking now. Keep in mind that this is just primer and it doesn't show full coverage, which is fine because once we put the paint on, we'll make sure there's full coverage there. Our main purpose here was just to cover up the stains and the odors, which thank God we did. You may also catch a little sneak peek of next week's video, but that's all I'm going to say for now. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe if you aren't already. Let me know in the comments down below if you are one of those people that enjoy painting or not. And share this video with a friend if you know they enjoy house renovation content like this. We are trying to reach a goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I can't do it without you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys back next week with another house renovation video. Love and try to make it new